everybody. This is a 2017 Lexus RX 350 and today we're going to show you how to change the oil. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is go inside the car. All right, so the first step is to open the hood and the hood release is right there. All right, once you pop the hood release from inside the vehicle, you're going to find the logo here, the front emblem, reach right under the hood and there's a flat lever. It sits this way and you're going to put your hand right on top of it. You're going to, sorry, you're going to put your hand right underneath of it. You're going to lift up and this way. So up and this way and then you lift the hood. And here is the lever if you want to get a closer shot of that so you can tell what's going on. When you reach under the hood, you lift up and to the passenger side of the vehicle, just like that. Now, under this, under this vehicle, I did not have to jack the car up. On a smooth, uh, level surface, I was able to crawl underneath it. Things are pre uh, positioned pretty uh, easy to get to. You'll need to check that before you try. You always wanna make sure that you've got your parking brake on and, and the engine is turned off so that it can't roll away on you. Uh, again, I did not need to, to jack mine up, but this is pretty easy as you can see here. This is the passenger side front wheel. That is your oil filter assembly. And right, let's see if I can give this to you. Back there is the drain plug, and we'll get another view of that from the other angle. But um, it sits sort of just behind, in fact, directly behind, your filter assembly. So you're gonna drain the drain plug first and I'll give you another shot of that here in just a second. All right, so what you're seeing here to the left of the shot, that is part of the exhaust system. That is your drain plug. Let me zoom in on it for you. There it is right there. So you'll need a wrench or a metric socket to get at that. All right, this is our drain plug. This is the passenger side of the vehicle. On, a, on this particular Lexus, this is a metric number 14 bolt. Um, a lot of the Toyota products, which this is, use a 14, but you need to you know, double check that first. We're gonna put, um, we're gonna put our ratchet on, we're gonna turn it loose, and then I'm gonna pull my drain pan underneath. When I pop it loose, it won't leak enough to make a mess. I've got a piece of cardboard down, and then I'll move the pan underneath. It's just easier that way than trying to mess with a socket inside of a pan. Something else that I did wanna mention here is, when these are changed by the dealer, a lot of times these are excessively over torqued, and there's really no reason for that. Um, they just use a machine and they over torque them. So uh, it might take some effort to pop it loose. I had to hammer on mine pretty good with my hand to break it loose. But anyway, what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna just get our ratchet and get it started like that, all right? Once I get it started, it's loose enough that I can turn it by hand. So I'm gonna move the plug under. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm gonna move the oil pan under the plug and do my best not to drop the drain plug in the oil pan when I pop it out. You'll wanna have a paper towel or shop rag handy because it's gonna make a little bit of a mess on your hands. And there we go. And we're gonna let that drain and then we're gonna move on to the actual oil filter assembly. This is our oil filter. I'm using a Wix, it's a 57047. You can use whatever brand filter you're preference is if you want to use the Lexus filter that's fine um, these are a little bit different than the traditional filters these are designed to have less waste so there's no metal uh, outside to the canister what you get is you get this drain release plug this is designed to help you um, release the oil out of the out of the filter assembly before you take the filter out you get a couple rubber gaskets. Those will go in towards the end. You've got your paper filter 
and then your instructions in there on how that whole process works. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take we're going to go under the back under the car and we're going to take the filter bolt out. And I'm going to show you how to use this tool right here. Um, I do want to mention though, you should be doing this after the engine has cooled for a little while, because if you do this with a hot or a warm engine, that oil is going to be hot enough that it can burn you. So you want to make sure you let it cool down enough that you're not dealing with scalding hot oil. We've got our, this is our um, oil filter assembly right here. And I've got my, my ratchet. And you can see here they've made it so that it fits perfectly into that release. So we're going to put it in there. I expect this to be over tight because the Lexus dealer did it. And sure enough, it is. All right, so I've broke this loose. Now, it was severely over torqued by the dealership, which is really disappointing because they're not following their own guidelines on, on the amount of torque these bolts are supposed to have on them. And I really had to work hard to break it loose, but we've got it loose here. You can see that I'm, I'm able to turn it here and here in a second. I'm gonna just turn it by hand, it's loose enough. You will get a little bit of oil that comes out here, but not a lot. Just be ready, make sure you have your catch pan under it. Uh, you can see that I've got gloves on just for that reason. And there's our bolt. There's just a little bit that comes out. And the next step is we're gonna put that little release tool up inside. So this is our this is our drain release tool right here. And I'm gonna put that right up in the hole where the where the filter bolt was. You gotta push it up in there pretty good, seat it up in there, and then you can see it forced pr a pressure release and it's gonna drain the oil out of the filter assembly. We're gonna let that drain. And then we're going to come back with a filter wrench and take the assembly off. All right, so we've drained our filter. I just removed the drain assembly or the little drain tool. You've got two options to get this filter housing off. You can go with a traditional filter gasket like that I'm holding up right here. Uh, this is a filter wrench. Now, these are fine, but typically if you've got more than one vehicle, you're going to have to have you know, one for each vehicle because they come in all different sizes. Your other option is an adjustable filter wrench like this. So it really just depends on, you know, what you're comfortable with, what works the best. Because this one is recessed and it's a little bit harder to get my wrench up in there, I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I fully, fully expect this uh, to be over torqued because based on how tight everything else has been, but we're about to find out. And let's see here, get my ratchet going, the socket going the right way here. Ah. Okay, so we got our filter out. Again, it was over torqued, but pay attention to a couple things here. Um, we've got an O-ring here at the bottom, right there. Just pay attention to where that sits. This is the part of the filter assembly you keep, so do not throw that away. This part in here is disposable. This is your paper filter right there. So we're gonna get rid of that. But you're gonna get a new filter in your kit, and it goes right here underneath the threads, and that's the large O-ring. Um, and then there's a smaller one that goes in a different location, but I wanted to point out the location of this one. All right, so this is the old O-ring. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you cut it off because you're gonna dispose of it. But I'm just pulling that guy off. I've got my new filter in, as you can see there. Now, I've got two O-rings that are new that came in this kit. I'm gonna take the larger of the two, and I'm gonna put it back down where the, the one I just removed went. And that again goes all the way to the, just underneath the threads where the threads stop right there, boom. Now the smaller O-ring, this one right here, goes on the bottom. So you're gonna put this back in the car, you're gonna put this back together first before you install the smaller O-ring. 
when I used my pressure drain tool, it pulled the old O-ring off because it sat right up in there and popped the ring off. So this, by the way, is disposable, but the new one, you wanna wait until you put this back in the car, then you put the O-ring back on, then the last part is that you put the bolt back in that order. All right, so this is our drain plug. When I pulled this out, I happened to notice that up against the the actual pan, the the part of the engine crankcase where the drain plug goes in, that there was a crush washer, and they had torqued this so tight that the drain plug had fused itself to the actual uh, underside of the vehicle. So you need to double check that. A lot of times there will be a crush washer. These are designed to be single use. That's why they're called a crush washer. You, when you when you put them on, they crush. Um, uh, you, you'll need to make sure that you've got the right one for your particular vehicle. I've got one here, and I'm gonna just make sure that I put that crush washer on before I tighten the drain plug back into the car. All right, so we've got our uh, filter assembly back in. By the way, that calls for 19 foot-pounds of torque, not the 3,000 foot-pounds that the dealership used. And then the bolt that goes on the bottom of the filter calls for nine and a half foot-pounds of torque. Um, again, everything was just ridiculously over-tightened, so if you have a, a torque meter, you might want to check that, but it's, it's 19 on the filter assembly and nine and a half on the bolt that goes on the bottom. Next, we're going to pull out our oil dipstick is right here. We're going to clean that off and we're going to set it to the side for now. And this is our oil fill location right here. So we're going to take the cap off. We're going to make sure before we pull that cap out that if it's got lots of dirt around it that we kind of try to wipe it off so that nothing falls down into the fill reservoir. And we're going to wipe that off and we're going to set it aside and we're going to start to fill oil. All right, so we've got our hood up. Uh, first thing I want to point out is that our particular vehicle calls for 0W20, that's the weight of the oil. You want to make sure that you check your manual and it will show you the engine oil specifications. Um, ours with a filter change is 5.8 quarts, but again you want to check your manual for your particular engine and your model year. You can see right here under the hood that ours is stamped with a sticker engine oil SAE 0W20 and that's right here. All right, so while we're putting fresh oil in, something that I thought about mentioning, something that I like to do is, I will save these empty oil containers. Now, if you buy them in the quart size, that's fine. It's just a little bit more work to do it. But I will put my used oil back in these once they're empty, take that back to the uh, parts store to recycle. It's just easier than milk jugs. And these are typically five quarts, so they'll hold more um, than a gallon of milk or an empty milk gallon will. So um, again, just, just a thought for you here, if you're looking to recycle oil, this is a good use for these. All right, so we've got enough oil in that it's showing in between the high and low on the dipstick, um, but we're not done. So we need to start the engine and let it circulate the oil through the system. That's gonna drop it down a little bit. It's gonna put some oil in that filter chamber. So we wanna crank the engine when we get close and then come back and check it again to make sure we've got our oil level right. Okay, the last step, once we're satisfied that we've got enough fresh engine oil in and we've put the uh, dipstick back in and put the oil fill cap back on, um, we've gotta reset the oil reminder. Now, oil maintenance is different than the in, the service maintenance reminder. Those are two different reminders. So we're going to reset for the purposes of this video the oil maintenance reminder. So you can see here I've got a message up. All right, I'm going to use the control, the direction or the d-pad controls on the right of the steering wheel. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go to, we're going to clear that message just by hitting the back button. And we're going to go to the little cog wheel at the top of the, the options. So we're going to go to the cog wheel, then we're going to press the center button on the control. 
We're going to go down to vehicle settings. We're going to select that again. We're going to go down to oil maintenance and we're going to select that. And then it's going to ask us to confirm and we're going to select yes. And we're going to again push that center button and it'll tell you that it's been reset. So just to take you through that one more time from the very beginning, if we are in, let me go back to the home screen here. If we're sitting here looking at various vehicle settings, we can scroll at the top all the way over to the cog wheel. We go down to vehicle settings, we go down to oil maintenance, and then we tell it to reset the data. And we're done. All right, everybody, so hopefully that helps you uh, with any oil change questions that you had on a 2017 Lexus RX 350. If this was at all helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up, and above all, please subscribe. That helps us reach our, our goal, our subscription goal. If you have questions, you can find out more uh, at partscounterguru.com. We have an Ask Us a Question section, and uh, we have more great videos like this as well as a podcast. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.